Welcome to Game Epoch, the show where I play through the history of gaming, starting with Super Mario Bros. and the Nintendo, and playing all the games, most important games in history, in order of release following that. This is the third game in my series, the original Legend of Zelda on the Nintendo. This is such a great game. Um, even today, it's pretty special, though dated, I think it still has a lot to offer, although it's very tough. Uh, compared to today's standards. Um, I grew up with this game. It's It came out in America a year after... a year and a half hours after I was born, so... But it's among my earliest memories, just like Mario and Final Fantasy and... all these other classics, so... I'm really excited to play this. I'm gonna go ahead and register. Uh, I'll use my name, because... why not? And here we go. That is how it all starts. It just drops you in and you have no idea what's going on. There's a lot going on up top with a gray block and a tiny little green dot there. Not much else to go off of. And then there's your rupees and your keys and your blue orbs. <laughs> Those are your bombs. And then the current item associated with the B button and the A button and then your life. That's what we got. That's always there. If you hit start, it brings down some more information that you can change what's associated with your B button, and you can see how many pieces of the Triforce you've gotten. And if you hit select, that actually properly pauses it. It's kind of nice. So you see this black square and you think, well, what do I... Oh, I go down here, and there's this old man who says, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this! And then you stab him in the butt, and you get a sword. It's great! And now, it's a magic sword with a beamy shooty thing! Okay, anyway. So... This game is very, very different from all of the most popular games that have come before it. It is an open world exploration game. Nothing to this degree had existed in this scale before this. Um, this was one of a kind. And even in the Zelda series, it's still kind of unique. Um, like all of the other games in the series from this point on, still allow you to explore its world and kind of go, you know, where you want to, when you want to, although that has become more limited in recent years, <laughs> where there's still a lot of limitation of where you can go until later on in the game. But with this, no. You can walk pretty much anywhere for the most part. There are some areas that are harder to get to until you gain some of the items that you'll get in dungeons. But for the most part, you can just wander around anywhere. This lends itself to the possibility of getting lost. But, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Buy something, will ya? And he's got the exact same color or coat that I do, which is interesting. You can buy a magic shield, which as you can see is bigger than the shield I've got, for 160, or a key, which is totally useless because you get them for free in dungeons, or a blue candle, which I will be wanting to get at some point. These shops are scattered all around Hyrule and, you know, little caves. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, this game, there's a lot to it, and then a whole, not a whole lot at the same time. Now, the blue rupees are worth five, and the flashy ones between blue and yellow are worth one. Yay! So, anyway, I want to talk about uh, a little bit of the history of this and its making and stuff like that, because that's... One of the things I want to offer about this. Oh, if you don't slash your sword when you're uh, getting projectiles thrown at you, you'll just block them with your shield. But if you attack at the same time that it comes to reach you, as you can see, the shield moves out of the way, you'll get hit. So, use that to your advantage. Um, although there are lots of more powerful projectiles or uh, magical ones that you cannot block until you get the bigger, more powerful magical shield. So that's worth getting, uh, before too long. Right now, I'm gonna spend some time actually preparing myself, because I like to- oh, no. No, <laughs> goodbye, five rupees. I like to, uh, get a lot of stuff done ahead of time, to give myself an easier time in the dungeons themselves. Because typically speaking, that's the way I like to play games. Um, 
I like working more earlier on and becoming godlike in strength <laughs> for the rest of the game. Especially by the end of the game, if oh man, if I am not like invincible or at least like overwhelmingly powerful compared to everything, I'm a little less than satisfied. <laughs> at least that's the way I've always been uh, growing up and stuff. My feelings on that have changed slightly, but I don't know, I still get a huge enjoyment out of that. And this game is no exception with that. I like to go around and get lots of money and get some stuff ahead of time. So that all the earlier dungeons I just... I walk through and I just trample over everything. I just enjoy doing that. There's just something very fun about that. Oh! Why am I even bothering with this thing? Whatever, I'm gonna just walk around, I'm gonna get rupees, I'm gonna look for bombs and uh, find the occasional heart piece. Ah. Anyway, I got the stopwatch, which is really nice, but only lasts for the screen that you're on, so. Now, something that's interesting about this game compared to, like, Ghosts and Goblins or Mario, is that uh, no scrolling screens in this game. Very interesting choice for them to do that. Probably because they wanted to have a giant connected overworld that they probably felt was easier to uh, I don't know, grid to map out for a player? Because they probably expected a player to draw some of this out, at least to a very rudimentary degree, on, you know, graph paper or something, or some kind of paper in order to help keep track of things. Although I think that there may have been maps that came up with some, some copies of the game. I actually don't know because I didn't own a Nintendo until much, much later. Uh, I don't want to buy bombs. I could find them for free. I might buy arrows here later, but I won't need to do that for a while. And the shield is here, but I don't want to spend that much on it. I can get it for cheaper somewhere. Um, so I do know this game fairly well. Um, I'm not like an expert at it, but I've beaten it several times. Um, more recently than, than uh, previously. In fact, I didn't actually beat it until I was much older. But I, I played this as far back as the late 80s. When I was only like 3 or 4, so... <laughs> you know, I, this, this game and I go way back. Um... And I loved it, and everyone I knew loved it. They just thought it was so cool that you could adventure around this world, and these sound effects were just so great. The music was awesome. Again, Nintendo trademark. See, there's bombs. All right, now there's a couple places I can go. I can go right up here, too. Might as well sit up here. Um, that's the thing that Nintendo just seemed to get. They seemed to understand that you want to really make an impact and make it more memorable. You give it good sound and music. Um, this game, Koji Kondo, again with the music and these guys with their sound design, just hit it out of the park. These sound effects that they have are just so memorable and fun. It's just this, it can't be understated. It's hugely important. And that right there, do -do 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 -do, everybody knows that. And it's great. It means you found something hidden. It's a secret to everybody. I just got 30 free rupees for that. So that's one of the things about this game, is there are things that you have no idea exist, and you wouldn't know unless you went around and just did random crap to random locations, bombed random spots on the wall because, hey, maybe there's something here, or you're the kind of player that just wants to map out the entire world, and so you're just going around bombing every inch of this place, trying to find something. Here's a fun secret. Where is it? Where is it? Oh come on, where are you? There it is! See, if you notice on the map, my green icon is now in the far upper right corner, and... If you had wandered around the other areas, you would've been like, well wait, how do I get there? It's because it's a secret. And you get a lot of money, so that's gonna help cut down some time. Yeah, I, I know this game fairly well. Inside this tree, by the way, is... Um, a gambling game. Oh, and you definitely want to go up here to get... I, I always love this spot, by the way. It's so primitive in its graphical design, because this is... <laughs> you look at it and go, what exactly is this? Your imagination would tell you, well, this is maybe some peak high up on a mountain, and there's a cave, and then that's just the ocean in the back. But really, if you had any other kind, you know, more graphical prowess to this, you might actually see some jagged, you know, ups and downs of a peak. Show this to the old woman. Let's go get me some drugs. What does this do? 
It's just kind of funny how you go into caves and talk to monsters and people and they yell at you to buy things and give you random crap and <laughs> it's just it's such a funny world. But it doesn't seem like it's in such great shape since there are no towns, there are no houses, there are no people, at least not in this game. And uh, there are just monsters everywhere trying to kill you and uh, yeah, so Hyrule is not a great place to live. So I just, it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of fun to put yourself in the, in the mythos a little bit and just kind of imagine what it would be like for these characters being in this world. It doesn't have much to offer you, but it's something. Uh, I'll go ahead and get the candle. I might as well. I'm not hurting for money and I need it at some point, so I'll get it now. The blue candle brightens up a dark room, but only for as long as you're in the room. I was kind of guessing on that, like I knew that there were- I, I guessed that there was something here, but I wasn't quite sure. Secret is in the tree at the dead end. I'm not sure if that's talking about the gambling tree, or what exactly it's talking about, but... Anyway, um, I am going to look for the heart while I'm over here. So yeah, the music, incredibly epic in its uh, writing for just a little 8-bit game. Um, really adventurous and grand. And, oh, it made a huge impact. And this is just one of the most important themes in all of gaming. Oh, there's a thing here. I just don't know if it's worth much. No, not here. Not here. Oh, God! I'm dead. Alright, well. <laughs> there goes my ideals of a perfect playthrough. I'll go ahead and stop this episode for here since it's just the first one, but, uh... Thanks for checking in the Game Epoch. I will see you guys in episode two of Zelda. This is Mystic Dan signing out. Bye!